Okay, for me there are two parts, and for me is the climate change and and what is happening in our environment is is now basically the main issue in in my life. I think that we all need to realize that that's the most important challenge humanity is, is facing. So my idea is that through art and through the, the beauty of underwater life and video, I can bring that to the people. I want to, to make them feel what once one person feels underwater. I've been a diver for many years. And I've seen things that in 10 years they will not be. It's hard to believe that beautiful things like the Great Barrier Reef and some reefs in Rajampat and most of the reefs of the world, they could be gone in 10, 20 years. Hey, we're heading to the studio to film a music video for Edible Flowers. Yeah, we're pretty excited about it. So we're going to be swimming in tanks today. That's what we can tell you until we get there. It should be um, it should be interesting. Hey. Ah, oh, good. Yeah, we're here now. Thank you. Good. Nice to see you. It's nice to meet you. <laughs> nice Thank to meet you, you so much for this. This is so exciting. <laughs> I hope I hope everything goes well and then you oh. like. Yeah, hey? yeah, yeah. Do you want I show you first everything so you know yeah. what is going to happen? Yeah. Great. Okay. Yeah, and safety diver. So <laughs> she will always be with you in the water. Miranda and Monica, yeah. nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Hi. You can perfect. And I'm sorry, Jono. Jono. Film in lights. Okay. Hey? Yeah. But it's very safe. We have a table for you that is black and nobody sees. Yeah. So, right. Hey? And the fact that we want to get is something like that. Uh, so. My name is Jose Gaicano and I'm an underwater studio photographer. We have these facilities in Nelson, New Zealand, and we do basically uh, underwater video and underwater photography. And it's the second facility in New Zealand and the only one in the South Island. I started photographing dancers, and when we wanted to, to cancel the gravity, and the only way to cancel the gravity is putting people in the, in the water. That's how they train the astronauts, really. So that's what we did. We fill a water tank with nearly 100,000 liters of water, and we bring the people under. So, she's gonna make the last cleaning, and they're gonna be inside. There is this guy looking at the box, you know, look, strange looking, and then you just come here, tac, tac, tac. you will go on the back, you know, and he's looking at you like very strange. Mm -hmm. you no, know, because mm -hmm. this is the, the idea is there, there is a little bit of a story. So what is happening here? Why? Then mm -hmm. the next you are inside. Yeah. Yeah, it, okay, it yeah. makes. Yeah. Right. We have these trousers. Oh, great. So, what I want is for the people to think. How can we allow so much beauty to disappear? So combining human images and the beauty of, of dance and, and music and their water with natural images like filming whales and, and dolphins and, and the beauty of the underworld. I try that the people feel, not just think about that, not just uh, think about the data, but think about the, the loss of beauty. That for me is the crime and the echo side of this, that this generation has to confront. Great, so we've got, we've got one out there. Yellow wonder, when you get away, convita, convita. Is that gonna be like a um, problem with the t-shirt line there, or is that?
I think probably the project right from the very start when we started Manuka said it's um, it's always been connected to a lot of issues that are happening on the planet at the moment as well. We felt like it would be a wasted opportunity to do a video just of us, no, yeah. no message, you know, it's a good chance to say something mm. to the public and to everyone. And, and that's the thing with music, you know, it's like you've got a, a powerful medium that you can use. Um, you're able to actually combine a whole lot of issues together as well and connect to people in a bigger bigger way and a bigger audience. So I think this is a great opportunity to work with somebody who's also so well established with what, what they're doing. Um, it's a real privilege. We're really mm. yeah, super excited. Really, really, it's great. Really lucky. Yeah. But, and the timing couldn't be better with um, all the dolphins that have been caught by catch fishing mm. nets lately. And, like yeah. even here in New Zealand, you know, off the yeah. Canterbury coast. And, that's just heartbreaking. So. Absolutely. And we want, you know, for our future generations, we want the kids to be able to actually experience what we did when we were kids. You know, you could go in the ocean and freely swim. Yeah. You, I mean, if they wanted to go fishing, great, they could do some fishing. But I think with what's happening, we've got this over overfishing of our oceans, um, mm. we've got incredible pollution that's just. It's got so incredibly intense that yeah, something something needs to be done. So if everyone can pitch in at some point, some level, in some way, and yeah. use their gifts to do that, then I think we could possibly do something pretty positive on this planet. Absolutely. Mm. And the oceans die, we die. So yeah. I studied oceanography in Dunedin, which um, you know, kind of geography of the ocean. So not really animals, but lots of physical processes. Was really looking for scientific kind of research work. Um, and then, but also was involved in 350 Aotearoa, the um, climate justice organisation, and was recruiting for people to get involved in that. And met Jose not because, because I kept on getting emails from him saying, "Oh, I can't. I want. To, I'm really keen, but I can't come because I'm off filming for my ocean documentary." <laughs> and I thought, I want to know more about that. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, and then he ended up needing someone else to come on board and help with kind of the science side of things. So. He took me on for that, but then I also help out with the film shoots. And I just want more people to take more action about protecting the seas and, and making kind of my, my real hope is that everyone understands the connections between the sea, the climate and people, um, because we're just all so intertwined and we, you know, we, the conversation about climate change is definitely starting to happen, but the conversation about how the sea is tied in with that, not only what climate change is doing to the sea, but how the sea regulates climate and um, buffers all the atmospheric stuff that we're doing. Um, so yeah, we just need to realise that everything's tied together and if we, if we protect our oceans then we'll be protecting our climate and protecting ourselves in the process. Here we go. You can go. Is there a trick to getting in or just get in? Um, just get in. Yeah, I'm not very good. Not very You tall. can sit on that part, yeah. yeah. But go down, turn yourself so you're facing it, yeah. yeah. Ooh! You've done a sport. Yeah. <laughs> Horrible when you are already inside and suddenly you discover. Very disappointing. There she going into the tank. And they go into the <laughs> Okay, and now what would we say? It is just a bit Because you, we know that we are very famous. We take out the ladder and you cannot get out unless you pay one million dollars. <laughs> one million dollars! <laughs> and we will throw in piranha every hour. Thank you.
Ja nicht. A little bit nervous. Oh, it was amazing. Honestly, just, um, I think, personally challenging and just really inspiring. Just learning new skills and stuff. Great people to work with. Man, that was awesome. I can't I'm looking forward to tomorrow. Yeah, <laughs> yeah the, un the underwater singing was way harder than I thought it would be. Even though I'd been practicing back in Christchurch, it was a real challenge to do. I didn't think about how deep the pool would be. And it made it, it made it harder, sort of not knowing where the bottom was, and yeah, but I think we made progress. Okay, here we go. Gramophone, this is our first checker list to make sure it goes. Okay, ready? Here we go. Today we are being, we are gonna be shooting all the day underwater. We have put the underwater speakers so they can hear, they can listen to the music when they are under. And it's the big day because this is really the difficult part: how to be performing underwater when we have barely no communication. So we have to somehow manage to transmit what we want them to do underwater. It's really interesting. I'm just in the water helping with communication, being there um, kind of as safety in case anybody, you know, either of the girls get tangled up in their clothes or just feel a little bit uncomfortable, I can get across and um, help lift them up so that they can <laughs> breathe. And then also just helping relay the communication between Fosse, who's going to mostly stay down under the water, and the girls. So letting them know when he's ready to shoot and when they can drop down.
analogy is what happened with with a car and the tank or with the water in in a tank you keep drinking and drinking and drinking and think oh it's inaccessible until you arrive to the last glass then when you drink the last glass of water you realize that you don't have more water so with all the damage that you are doing to the environment is the same. We keep throwing things like if it was a black hole and keep throwing until all this rubbish and pollution and destruction arrive to the point that it touches and there is no return. So we are in a 10, 15 year, yeah, years time frame to reverse that. If we cannot do that, life in this planet will not be able to sustain us because we will have destroyed it. Okay, it's finished for today. Woo. Fantastic. fantastic! Great job! Thank you all. <laughs> thank you. Really fantastic. Really amazing. So much fun. Ah, Eighty awesome. percent of the corals of the world are in danger of disappear, and we are doing nothing. Well, we are pumping more sludge and more <laughs> more mining sails into our seas like if it was a dumpster and, and we don't realize that most of our food and our weather depends on the sea. No sea, no life.